Hi, so great to be here at this digital edition of South Summit. I'm super excited to introduce our next conversation. Two of the great top keynote speakers for this year's edition of South Summit, which is Carlos Torres Vila, chairman of BBVA, and Marcelo Claude, chief executive officer of SoftBank Group International. Carlos, Marcelo, thank you so much for being here. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. The COVID crisis and everything that it has disrupted, what are the main impacts for your business? Carlos, maybe we can start with you. Uh, for us, our day-to-day -day has changed dramatically. We were able to um, anticipate uh, um, the, uh, the, the uh, crisis by sending our people home and really prioritizing health over anything else, uh, pri prioritizing the health of our employees, the health of uh, um, our clients. And thanks to our digital capability, we've been able to serve our customers and continue to be there for them with a, a very uh, small proportion of our people really uh, having to go to the branches to open them up. We have seen dramatic increase in the um, in app, app registrations. Dramat I think it's 30% globally increase in, in app uh, usage. Um, so um, clearly uh, technology has come to the rescue in terms of providing the service. In our case, we have also taken a step forward in terms of supporting society with uh, about $50 million uh, commitment of money. A big part of that was out of BBVA's uh, own funds. Uh, another portion was fundraising from clients and fundraising from employees. And that has gone to medical equipment at the beginning, quite strongly supporting the, you know, bringing ventilators and the likes. Uh, also supporting the most vulnerable in the places where we're present. We'll talk about LATAM in a minute. Uh, and then finally also uh, doing some funding for uh, COVID-related research, mostly out of our foundation. So one is it's hard to sometimes talk about how good business is going, right, when you're experiencing so many losses. But let's park that, and I think the world has heard a lot of the negative side of COVID. But I will tell you, on the positive side of COVID, we have experienced probably the fastest and exponential increase of the digitalization of every life and of every business. And when we look at the world and when we look at investment, when we look at our portfolio of 170 companies around the world, we've, I am every morning when I talk to our different CEOs, I'm blown away by the innovation or how everybody has digitalized their business. Unless I massively transform my business, I am never gonna be able to survive. The pandemic has brought something that we said it was going to happen a few years from now, the di digitalization of the economy, and uh, it has accelerated. So I think the world has changed forever, and I think the world is never going to be the same. The pandemic is going to finish, and the world is going to go back to normal, and I say you're going to go, you're going to go bankrupt if you think that way. Going forward, we envision uh, a mix that people can continue to work from home a lot of the time for the things that working in a focused way in your own space with the flexibility to also tend to family matters. Also, it'd be helpful to bring uh, more diversity to our workforce uh, so that men also share on the, on, on the work at home much more. Uh, and I think we need to work a lot in most of the countries where we're present, that's an issue. And, and I think working from home can help um, solve that matter as well. Um, so for all of those things, we will maintain working from home as a, a real option possibility for everyone. But for certain things, it's good that you come to the office uh, every week and you know, for team meetings, for dynamics that require you to be there. And what we're seeing a lot of companies do, I'll give an example of Google. Google has a lot of employees that work across the bridge in Brooklyn. And those employees want to go to work, but somebody like Google, they don't have an office in, in, in Brooklyn. So those employees come, they're allowed to come to a WeWork in Brooklyn, which it, we've made it look like it's a Google facility. What people are scared is to get into public transportation, to get into the subway, to get into buses and all that. But if people can find a way to work to work, to walk to work, or just take one ride to work, or take bicycle, or take a bicycle to work, people are dying to get back to work. So I think, I, I think, the future of working is not going to go, hey, we all work from home, but companies are going to have to think a model in which the offices are closer to where their employees live. Plan like you are with COVID for the next two to three years. 
one way, you know, one way or another, because this is not one that, hey, there's a vaccine and everybody gets vaccinated and goodbye COVID and, we, and, and world back to normal. That's the way we at SoftBank are looking at the world and that's how we're making our investments. How can you, how do you see the future of FinTech banking in Latin America, understanding that there are new players who have a very high NPS with customers? Yeah, I, great question. I, I think it is uh, the same that we have witnessed happening in, in other markets. Uh, maybe the difference here is that the unserved need might be larger. Well, by the way, we are partnering with a lot of fintechs, but also we're partnering with the big tech. I, we announced a partnership with, um, with Uber in Mexico, which is quite successful in bringing uh, also th uh, hundreds of thousands of customers onto our already very large bank in Mexico. We have other discussions ongoing with other big techs. We announced in July um, an agreement with Google to market a Google BBVA account in the US. Um, other banks as well, but we are one of a very few set of large banks um, that has announced that. And, and that's really a response to what you were describing. So on top of the, so our customers used to walk into the branch, right? So they would walk the street and walk into the branch and open their account or buy their product. Then they moved on to the digital channels uh, some years ago and already uh, a large percentage, more than 60% of our, of our clients are digital and, and m more than half are, are mobile users. So uh, they, a, lo a lot of the new flow comes from our own digital channels. Now the movement is going into uh, third party digital channels. Already that's happening and you know this better than me, Marcelo. Um, and we're just partnering there so that we can do a win-win. We can provide the product uh, and we can partner with uh, big brands that have also um, the cloud, the marketing cloud, the, the, the customer base to bringing new business for us. So we see it as a, as a way of growing. And I think a lot of the banks are gonna be out of business because of the FinTech competition, the big tech competition. In our particular case, we are one of a few, uh, one of a kind that I, I think are doing the right things to be part of the uh, landscape uh, going for, forward as well. So in, in, in my, from my side, we're big admirers of BBVA. And it fills me with a lot of pride that you see a Spanish company in the U.S. In many cases, when I see your name in branches and in some place in the U.S. that I've seen. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a huge admirer and I love what you guys are doing. I just think we're going to experience one of the most uh, fascinating clashes where I'm a believer a few banks that understand what's coming, that can adapt to it. I think we have an opportunity. The pandemic is really an opportunity to, uh, to reset. And one of the aspects we need to reset is precisely that of discrimination so, and inclusion in all respects, uh, financial inclusion, uh, gender, race. From our, from our side, we're doing uh, many things internally and also trying to do the same in society. Maybe one of the uh, biggest initiatives, uh, Marcelo, that we have at BBVA that I'm super proud of is our uh, microfinance foundation. So we can exert change through our own activity. And, and microfinance is beautiful because it's productive credit, it's financing people with ideas. We do it for non-for-profit through the foundation. And uh, we have uh, supported already um, more than five million people um, come out of poverty. And most of them are 60% of the clients. Right now I think we have 2.3 million clients at the foundation. Uh, more than 60% are women. 85% of the people who come out of the poverty are women. So I, I am committed I am committed to helping this cause and, and being a Hispanic in the U.S., right, I've, and I'm having been blessed to, to with what the jobs that I have and the companies and all that, you know, this is one of my personal commitments to, to try to help. And also my, my partner, my boss, Masa, you know, he's Korean in Japan. So that's a different type of discrimination. But I'll tell you two things that we're doing. One is, I don't know if you, most people don't know but in the U.S., there's about 9 million families who don't have Internet access at home. People think of the U.S. as this superpower. And, and in many cases, poverty in this country is pretty bad. And then the problem is that 80 percent of them are either Latinos or they're black. So one thing that I started is I started the One Million Project in which we gave away one million computers with one million free Internet access with the hope to get my competitors, to that in, my, in my other job as CEO of Sprint, uh, to get my competitors to react and to help me what is called to, 
to once and for all bridge the homework gap because we can fix it, break it because kids cannot do homework at home. And then now with the merger with T-Mobile that we just did, we made a commitment to give away 10 million free internet connections, meaning we're going to eradicate that. So that's going to be good for Hispanics, that's going to be good for blacks. And then in the middle of this disaster where we were at protests, we had looting and all that, SoftBank, I opened what is called the SoftBank Opportunity Fund. And it's a fund dedicated only to support black and Latin entrepreneurs who didn't have access. When I founded Brightstar, which became the largest Hispanic-owned company in the history of the United States, I didn't have access to venture capital. I didn't have access to private equity. It was really, really hard. And when I saw the numbers, only 1.8% of all venture capital goes to Hispanics and only 1% goes to blacks. And we are a much bigger part of the population. So I'm so proud we launched this. We've already funded close to 10 businesses. It's $100 million. It's a good start. Uh, we have over 700 applications, which is incredible. So we're committed to helping, at least in the U.S., you know, all the black and, and Latino entrepreneurs. And my goal is to expand that throughout the world so we can have a specific fund that can help communities that traditionally didn't have access. And it's not a gift, it's not a grant, it's not a foundation. You know, we make money, we're investing, but we're giving the opportunity to entrepreneurs who didn't have a chance. So, so we're, and, I, and I think, again, both you and I are leaders of global companies. We both have, I guess, a, the Latin blood or Hispanic blood, uh, and, and we both operate all over the world. So I look forward to continue to see what you're doing with your foundation. And if you see any opportunities in which we can get SoftBank to partner with BBVA, we would love to, to try to just make the world a better place and a world that's more equal. So you can count on me yeah. for anything that we can Absolutely, work together. Absolutely, Marcelo. Absolutely. Congratulations on, on, on the Opportunity Fund. It sounds uh, extremely exciting, and I think there is plenty of, of room for um, us to cooperate. So really looking forward to hooking up uh, on that. Well, it's been also so nice. Also looking forward to meet you in presence. In person. Thank you. Good luck. Guys, that was amazing. Thank you so much for participating. What profound insights in so many different sectors and so many different regions in a short space of time. So thank you again so much, Carlos and Marcelo, for participating. And folks, that's a wrap from us. So back to you at the studio.